Hello everybody, welcome to We Build Stuff, and today I'm going to attempt to show you how to use Inkscape, which is a type of drawing software, to design some sort of shape or logo or whatever uh, to send to a plasma cutter. Now I'm doing this video specifically for my students based on the software that we are using, which is an older version of Inkscape that runs on the machines that we have available. However, a lot of this is going to work for other people. My goal with this is to find an image or something on Google, Google image or whatever browser you like, uh, whether it's a DXF file as the final output or a JPEG, PNG, SVG or something and turn it into a vector drawing. So here's how I would be starting this. So the first thing I've done, I went and found a picture that I liked. Now this one, to find it, I went to Google Images and I typed in Skull Headphones DXF because DXF, that can maybe get me as close as I can to an idea. Now you could draw everything from scratch, but this is just to show you how to, you know, find an image online and use that as part of your design, or at least a starting process. And I found this one here. Now, eventually after clicking through all the uh, clickbait ads where it says download and 10 things pop up, I finally got here. I pressed download. Well, maybe it's one of those. Maybe it's that one. It was one of them. And I was able to eventually get the picture that I wanted. Now, the one that it came out with when it was all done, it was called Vector Art underscore 20427.dxf. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open that with Inkscape. So I right click, open with Inkscape, and it should open that. Now it's going to ask me how does it want to read it. I'm just going to leave it at scale factor one. I don't want it to be huge or too small. Uh, there's no text for this one, so we're just going to press OK and see what happens. Wait for that to load. Okay, so it has sent me this on a blank canvas. I can go ahead and zoom in by pressing Control and then up and down with my, my mouse wheel. I could press plus or minus on my keyboard. If I click and hold the middle mouse wheel and drag, that moves it around. Right click, that'll bring up something. So if you've never used Inkscape before, the best way to figure out how to do stuff is just by clicking and seeing what happens. So here I have this DXF image. It is already loaded it up like this. And currently, if I zoom in, I'm going to go over to the left on my screen and I'm looking for a thing that says Edit Paths by Node. If I click that and just click somewhere, it's going to highlight a node. I can zoom in on that, maybe if that's helpful. A node is the end of a line or part of your pathway. Now that one starts here. I'm going to click and drag and it ends here, but it doesn't continue. Something is wrong with this drawing. Whoever created this, it's, it looks cool, but the pathway is broken. A plasma cutter or a laser cutter or some sort of machine that requires pathways to be uh, complete may get confused with this drawing. So I need to somehow connect each of these together. I could redraw the whole thing, or in Inkscape, I'm going to have to do some trial and error and figure out what functions are going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to box select everything, grab my little arrow tool in the top left. Shortcut for that is F1. And you'll see that it has highlighted all the different shapes. Now, ideally for me, there shouldn't be this many shapes. There might be the headphone, that should be one shape. The skull, that should be one shape. And then each of the individual teeth, one shape. The eye socket things and the nose. However, it's given me multiple ones. So if I want to join these all together, I'm going to go to path and I'm going to scroll down and read each one and figure out what they do. Well, what happens if I press union? Well, that looks dreadful, at least for my purposes. I'm going to undo that. I can go to path and try exclusion. Let's see what happens there. Nothing because I didn't have it selected. Box selected all. Path. What happens if I press exclusion? It looks dreadful. Edit, undo. You're going to basically click until it joins them together. I have a feeling that going to path and then combine will join them together. Excellent. So far, I like the way that this looks. Now, I haven't even done anything else other than I haven't looked at any of these. I haven't looked at anything over here. But I kind of want to now figure out where are all these little things being stored? Layers. I'm going to look to the right, at least for mine, and here it says View Layers, or the shortcut is Shift Control L. If you click that, it brings it up, and it looks like I have a layer called Zero. I can turn it on and off with the eyeball. I could press Lock, which means I can't change it at all. But so far, everything's on zero. Excellent. I can live with that. If I click and drag it, it moves everything. Good. What if I just want to change part of it? Uh, maybe the eyeballs. I can 
double click, zoom in, and now you'll see that these nodes, there we go, they're all connected. It's one pathway that keeps going all the way around and around and around and around, up and around. Okay, so far that one's good. When I'm teaching students this, I want to see two colors. I want to see black and white because we have a piece of metal. It's either going to be a certain shape on the outside with holes in it. Now, in this case, the holes are going to be represented by the eyeballs, the nose, and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this with black and white instead of this thin outline because a piece of metal like that would be thinner than string. I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to find my dropper or the, oh, here we go. It's called the fill bounded areas. Shortcut is shift F7. Click that and let's just see what happens. Okay, I filled that up. I want to fill up the skull and each individual tooth. Click, 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 click until something happens. Excellent. Now, looking at this, though, I've got these weird outlines here. That That's really not going to work for me in this specific drawing. So I'm just going to undo all that quickly. Undo, undo. I'm just pressing Control-Z. Okay, we're back to that. How about we create a new layer for this fill? I'm going to go over to the right, and if your thing has disappeared... You click there, and the shortcut again is Shift, Control, L. I'm going to create a new layer with a plus button, and I'm going to call it Fill Layer. I had a buddy named Phil once. I haven't seen him in a while. Press Add. Now I have a new one. I can turn on and off. So zero is my original fill. There's nothing there yet. But I'm going to make sure that's highlighted. I'm going to go back over to the Fill Bounded Areas. Shift, F7 is the shortcut. Click, click. Let's fill each of those in. I can zoom in if that's easier to see what's going on. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Now it still has those weird lines. However, if I go over here to the right and I'm going to close off layer zero, there we go. You can see the difference as I click on and off. Now my fill layer, on and off, is represented by all this black stuff. Now, if this was a piece of metal, there would the these headphones would not be connected to the skull. The teeth would not be connected to the rest of the skull, you know kind of like how it normally is. They can fall out, right? And then you put it under your pillow. Ignore that. Uh, zoom in, and I need to find some way to, to connect each of these pieces so that when it's done and out of one solid piece of metal, nothing falls apart. I can hang it up on the wall, hang it from my rear view mirror, just, just hang it from a tree anywhere I want. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to try and draw some kind of shape. Now, there's a lot of different shapes you can make. You could make rectangles. So over here I have create rectangles and squares. I'm going to click that and I want to make sure that it is the right color. I've got a bunch of colors down at the bottom. I want black because everything else is black. Cool, let's make a rectangle. Well, that looks dreadful. Could I rotate it maybe? If I press this, click back and forth just in the middle of it, it, it goes from changing its outside shape, click it again, and I can change its rotation. Well, that kind of works. Let's uh, shrink it down. No, that's not it. Got to click, shrink it down, maybe something like that. Click, rotate. I can sit there and play with that. Wow, doesn't that look fantastic? It's joined. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way that I prefer, because as a, somebody who uses paper pens and paints and stuff, I like to draw uh, with those kind of tools and add curves instead of just straight lines. I can scroll down here and find somewhere on this side panel something about Bezier curves. And if you don't know which icon represents the word, hover over it and wait a second. There we go. Draw Bezier curves and straight lines. The shortcut for that is Shift F6. If I click that, it's going to allow me to drop a node. Similar to when I saw nodes all here, dot, 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 all the way around, I want to add my own node. So. Shift F6 is the shortcut. I'm going to click somewhere in the teeth because I want to create a box that connects these two. I'm going to click. And if I click, it just makes a straight line. If I click and hold my mouse button down, it allows me to draw curves. Ooh, ah, well, that'll work. You're not going to see it, but I want to add a little bit of a curve to this one. So I'm going to click and drag. Maybe not like that. That looks goofy. Just a little bit of a curve. And the end of this, I need to drop it somewhere. If I just drop it here and keep clicking, it it's useless. It's not going to help me at all. I'm going to zoom in, and I need to make sure it ends. There we go. Did you see how that highlighted? If I click over, it kind of turns a different color. Highlight, click, and now I've got one shape. Now let's zoom out and see what that looked like. Well, that's just given me a outline. I want it to be full of black. How, how on earth do I do that? Well, I'm going to look over here, and I need to find something that says fill and stroke. Now, it's going to be one of these. 
So I could sit and go over each one, each one, each one. Or I can use the shortcut, which is Shift Control F. Shift Control F. And something little pops up there. Fill and stroke. Currently, fill is set to X. Well, I want to give it a flat color. Black is good. That looks great. However, I know that there's still a stroke around it. See if I can click it on and off. You can still see the outline going. I'm going to click fill. Go to my stroke paint or stroke style. Stroke paint. I'm going to get rid of it. Press X. There we go. That's the shape that I drew. So if I actually go and click on this, you can see it highlighted in red there for a moment as it flashes on and off. There it is. It has each of my little lines and shapes. I can actually go back and edit those if I want. Click and drag them. Click and drag them. As long as I'm using, up here on the top left, the Edit Paths by Node, or F2. Now I'm just going to leave that for now. Let's add these other ones quickly. I'll put this in a time lapse. I'm going to do this in the Bezier Curves. Click. Okay, fantastic. I got all those drawn. Let's zoom out and see how it looks. All right, the teeth are all connected. Looks like he's kind of wearing braces now. That's all right. And uh, do we have any other floating black objects that are not connected? It's pretty obvious. The headphones are not connected. So in order to listen to stuff, I, I guess I should add him some ears or something. So let's, uh, again, use the Bezier curves because that's what I'm going to be teaching with this one specifically. Drop, put a thing down. Let's go about that tall. I'm going to give it a little curve just to give it some interesting look. Finish my line. I need to fill it, so I'm going to go fill. Sorry, stroke paint is on X. Fill is on solid. Awesome. Now, I could try to redraw that over here, make it exact. Or, in my case, I'm just going to select that. Edit, copy, edit, paste. There it is. And I've got that one here. Now, it's the exact same as this. I want to flip it. I want to give it a mirror. So I'm going to here, drop it into his eyeball there for a second. I want to flip it. I'm going to go through here and try to figure out because I've never used this program before and go back and forth until I find something that says flip horizontal or some words like that. Hmm. Maybe I should slow down. Oh, object down here, down here. Flip horizontal. The shortcut for that is the letter H. Click. Okay. Let's try to line that up and make it look kind of close to the other one. Excellent. All right. We now have a drawing that looks like everything is connected. Black is metal, white is holes that have been cut out. This might work for us. Now, what else can I do here? It looks cool, but the machine, the plasma cutter, will not interpret this as a drawing that it can cut out because if I select everything, you'll see that it's more than one shape. I need to combine this all and turn it into one solid shape. There's a couple different ways to do this. Maybe I could go to path. Combine. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Well, it did that to it. It did that to it. That's like the only one that looks like it's good. Maybe I can't select all of these at once and do this. Let's press Edit, Undo, Combine. Maybe I have to do one at a time. I can press the headphones. Maybe hold. Yeah, okay. So I can select each one separately. If I press Shift, click, Shift, Shift. There we go. I've selected those three. Let's see. Will it let me combine those? Path. Combine. Ew. Gross. Maybe one at a time. I'll click uh, just the headphones. Shift. Click. I've got those two selected. Path. Combine. It still doesn't work. So what options do I have? I could go through and keep doing different ones until eventually it works. Maybe union. Click. Shift. Will union work? Object. Path. There it is. Path. Union. So far, so good. There we go. It's created those. All right, let's try to join the other one together. Click, shift, click, object, path. There it is, path, union. It's joined them together. I think he has to pay his dues now. If I click now, because this is still separate. I've taken his headphones off. Click, now click the skull, path, union. There we go. Those are all one shape, but... Oh, his teeth fell out. Let's uh, zoom down here. So I could go through each one at a time, and I'll do that. But I'm also going to show one other way where let's say I didn't want to go through that. I could make sure everything is selected. Bound, big box, select over everything. And find here, there's going to be something that says some way to turn it into a bitmap. 
Let's see, edit, let's see. Ooh, edit, make a bitmap copy. If I click that, if you notice for a moment that it's hesitated, I now have two drawings. One drawing is the one that I was working on. The other one is a pixelated copy. Here we have a vector image, and over here, if I zoom in, you'll see that this has nice smooth curves, which is all made out of nodes. Remember, I can edit my nodes. Over here, we have this pixelated looking thing. It looks close from far away, but my machine won't interpret that. Well, what was the point? It does. It is all connected, but maybe I can take this new drawing, object, find over here, where is it? I want to somehow turn it from a bitmap. Look for the word bitmap, object. Do you see the word bitmap? I don't. Path, do you see the word bitmap? There it is, trace bitmap. Click. Now it's giving me all these options that have popped up. How many colors do I want? I only want two. I'm going to bring that down to two colors. I'm going to go down here, scans. I don't know what that means, but let's do two because I think it's two colors. Stack. I don't, I don't want to stack anything. I just want one. And then over here, smooth. Let's keep it rough. I'm going to unclick that. Now, so far, I don't know what's going to happen yet. But if I go here to live preview, click, it'll show up something in here. I could even make this bigger or smaller. Maybe it'll let me zoom in. Nope, but I tried. If I press OK, click. Well, something happened. It says execute the trace if you look down there tinily. Press X. Well, it still looks the same, doesn't it? Click and move it and look. It has created another thing. So in the middle, we have our pixelated stuff. Over to the right, our newly created one, and everything's joined. And then our old one, where it's still multiple pieces together. So there's different options to get to the final uh, goal here of getting one solid block. But this is a way that you can create anything. You can add words, text. Uh, you can add different shapes. Maybe, uh, maybe I want to, you know... Whoa, I don't even know what that is, but let's undo that for now. Either way, we've got this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other stuff for now. Click. I'm just going to select them all, find the delete key on my keyboard, delete, and I've got my one final thing. Okay, we've come up with our design, and now what? Resize it. Now, the piece of metal that I'm going to be using for this is, according to my ruler, So according to the ruler, it is from here, zero, 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 just under eight inches. It's seven and three quarters long. Now let's zoom in. There we go. Seven and three quarters long to there. So to make sure my plasma cutter doesn't accidentally, you know, cut around the metal, it all stays on. I'm going to shrink the height of my drawing to 7.5 or seven and a half. You can convert that into centimeters if you like, but that's the way that this machine runs. So let's do that. I'm going to highlight everything, or in this case, it's one giant picture. I'm going to highlight it all, click whatever. And at the top, it gives me an option here for width and height. Well, I think I want to make the height 7.5. So I'm going to change that to 7.5, hit enter. And well, they grew, but they didn't really get wide. Why on earth did that happen? That's because my ratio was not logged. Let's edit undo the transformation. So if I click that up here in the top corner, you're looking for when locked, change both width and height by the same proportion. So if I click that, now I can zoom in, change it to 7.5 for the height. And now it has made it bigger based on that ratio of being locked. The width is going to be 6.821. Not that I'm really going to count that far, but uh, we should have our design there. Now, in order to get this actually to the machine, well, this part's a little bit trickier. I need to save it as a DXF file. That's something that you'll usually see with AutoCAD, but I'm going to go to File, Save As, Change the Type, I'm going to go down, go down, go down, see if I can find it. There it is, DXF. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Headphone Skull. And so that I remember how wide it is or how high, I'm going to write H7 underscore 5. So I know that the height of it is 7 and a half inches or 7.5 inches. Or, you know, it, it, it's, it's close to 19 centimeters. But my machine reads inches. Okay, I'm going to press save. Now, it's giving me a couple of different options here. My base unit, I'm doing everything in inches. Let's leave that on inches, and let's see what happens when I press OK and export. OK, I have my file here. 
It's called Headphone Skull H7 underscore 5 dot DXF. I'm going to drag this onto my flash drive. There we go. And now we're going to be turning off the screen recording and walking around to a machine. See you in a minute. So while I'm waiting for that to boot on, here we go. We're greeted with my desktop. Now we're going to be using Sheet Cam. I'm going to go ahead and open that up, let that load, insert my flash drive. There's my file. I'm just going to drag it over to a new folder that I've created in my documents. I've called it Plasma Demos because that's what I'm doing today. And now i got to figure out what I'm doing with this software. Well, I can go here to New Part. I'm going to right click, press new part, and I'm going to find, I'm going to find under my documents, there it is, plasma demos, headphone skull, click, and it's going to ask me a few things. Well, I'm just going to make sure I don't change anything here. I want it to go in the bottom left corner of my material, so I'm going to press OK. Wow, I've got some uh, more than one thing here. I wonder what happened. So I've walked back to my computer and I realized my layers. I still had my original DXF drawing layer. So it spat out this plus my thing. So I'm not just going to hide it. I'm going to click and just delete that. Delete current layer. There we go. Now let's export this again. As we did before, file, save as, export it as a DXF, DXF, and then we'll transfer it to the other computer. All right. I've got the new file. Let's see if that one works better this time. All right, let's delete that. New part. Open it up. There we go. New. Double click. Same things should pop up. Press OK. There. There is my drawing this time. It's all connected. Now we need to double check that the size is right. So in Sheet Cam, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can go to Options, Job Options, and we can actually go and change the height. Now I believe we said it was seven and a half because the total thing was seven point. 7.5. So if I go like that, there we go. I can see that's good. Now my width, I'm just going to leave it at maybe 10. Doesn't really matter for this place. And the thickness of my material is an eighth inch or 0.125, or you can call that about 10 gauge. There we go. Okay. Press okay. Now I'm happy with this so far. Let's go figure out the actual machine. So we have a PowerMax 65 plasma cutter that is set up and hooked up to a fast cut elite series. Sorry, I'm stepping on metal. The fast cut elite series icon 4x4 plasma cutter. Well, we need to turn this on. All right, we have power, but currently we have no air. Well, that's strange. Why is this hissing at me? That's better. All right, we're at 100, that's good so far. The front of my machine, I'm set to 65 amps. There's no weird error code, so that's good. I can crank this up or down. We sometimes will use a 45 amp, but today we're using a 65 amp tip. And there's my piece of metal. It's pretty long. The height of this is 7.75. We shrunk ours so there's gonna be a little bit of space on the top and the bottom. But now the machine is ready to almost use. We need to turn on the table by a button down here. Wait for that thing to blink red, excellent. And when we are going to cut, I'm also gonna be turning on the ventilation. But not yet, because that's loud. So we have this over here. I said 65 amp, didn't I? That's now where we need to take this DXF drawing and turn it into G code. So if I go over up here to operation, Make sure I've got that selected. Operation Plasma Cut. I'm presented with this menu system. I'm going to be doing an outside offset, and you can hover over it, and it shows you what that is. That's where it cuts the inside of your lines. Well, I want the outside, and then the inside holes will do their thing. I'm going to go to Layer and pick the layer of the drawing. It still has it there, Fill Layer. And I have a bunch of different tool options available. The one I'm going to be using today is 10 gauge, Let's find out. We want to find 10 gauge, 65 amp, 125 volts. So tool number T6. This is our most used option for 10 gauge steel. Click that. It's already given me an automatic feed rate because that's programmed into the tool. 
down here. There are a bunch of different options and stuff, but we're going to leave it on arc arc and I'm going to do a lead in length of 0 0.25. Well, what does that mean? Let's show you. If I press OK, it's going to go ahead and generate the paths. I didn't get any error codes. That's fantastic. But if I zoom in on my drawing, let's zoom in maybe here in the eyeball. Well, I didn't draw that. What is it? That's where the plasma cutter is actually going to be going, coming around, and it's going to start the cut there and then go in, do its loop, go all the way around, and then it's going to lead out because this is waste piece. I'm not keeping that. You'll also see that on the nose. You'll see that looks like, oh, right here on the outside cut. There's another one here for this shape. So we're going to be able to follow that along. All right, last thing before I process, if I wanted to, I could go up here to this little move tool, that cross thing, nesting or whatever that is. And if I click and drag this around, it allows me to move it somewhere else on my piece of metal. I'd kind of want it to be as close as I can to the bottom, not overlapping, he's eating it, no, just kind of about there, down a little bit, line it up, Ooh, yeah, that's pretty good. So this is gonna give me a little bit of space there, it's a tiny bit there, a little bit up at the top. So this way I know it's going to fit my metal as long as I line my tools up correctly. If you remember math class back in school, you've got graph paper and the bottom graph would be zero, zero for its X, Y coordinates. We also have Z, which is going to be going in and out, but let's get to that after. Okay, we've got our code generated. I'm happy there's no error codes. I could watch the simulation in here, click this and press start. This is just kind of fun to do. It'll actually show you the path that everything is going to be following for its cuts. There's my final outside cut. I have this at 300 times speed, not uh, the regular 100, and then it's done. Okay, cool. Let's generate this code by going up top here where it says P, run the post processor. It's going to ask me to output it. I've got all my files here every time. I just don't uh, delete anything. I keep them all. Headphone skull, H7.5, new tap, save. Now what do I do with that file? So here I'm going to open up Mach 3 Loader. I'm greeted with a screen and something here. And Mach 3, which is, in our case, the fast cut CNC one, um, this is what is going to control our machine over here. Now I don't see my drawing, so let's load that up. I'm going to go to File, Load G Code, and here, I'm going to find the code that I made. Headphone skull, H5, H75, new tap. Click. And there it is. Now, this isn't really a drawing. It is a combination of code over here, or if I scroll down, it's just coordinates. So if as I'm scrolling, you'll see these little white parts start highlighting on here. That's the pathway that it's following based on the G code. I used to have to program this by hand, and it was ridiculous. I love having machines that'll convert it for me. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Let's rewind like an old VHS tape. Okay, now before I go and do coordinates, I want to make sure most of these other things are set up. If I scroll down a couple lines in code, one of the first thing here it's talking about is my type of tool I'm using, 65 amp. Well, I already checked that on the machine. 125 volts. Well, that didn't have an option on the machine, but it has an option here. I want to make sure I'm set to 125. Uh, when I'm using a 45 amp tip, I'll usually run it at about 82, but in our case, 125. There we go. Tweety Bird approved. It's showing this as my X, Y, my 0, 0. Well, let's see if that's where I want it to be on my actual machine. Well, not really. I'm going to go ahead and turn my motors on. It made a clicky noise. Press E stop, probably for emergency stop. Now it's green. That's good. Now, sometimes this will work by using a controller. However, I have no batteries today, so I'm going to control it with the keyboard. I can go to do up, down, left, right, and page up and page down. Let's see what happens. That was left, right, up, down, page down, page up. Okay, I'm going to go back and forth until this is set up where I want it to. All right, that's pretty close. It's kind of in the bottom corner. I don't want to waste material and put it in the middle. Now, is my material set up right? It looks pretty straight on here, doesn't it? Well, just in case, because we're students, we want to save as much as we can. I'm going to use a ruler here, line it up with the edge, and pick a spot on my machine. So there, it looks like it's at just under nine and a half or 24 centimeters on the other side. What does it say? 
it's at nine. So I gotta push that. Okay, let's see, nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter, that's pretty straight. I'm gonna line up the tip of my plasma cutter just about there. Just about a millimeter or two from the edge. I made a little dot. I'm gonna go back to the computer, use the keyboard and move this just above there. Now, every time I press here, it moves like that much. That's like half a centimeter, a quarter inch. I'm gonna to go to step. Now it's gonna move just that much of an inch. That's not very much. Made some noises. Let's go back and forth and check it. That's pretty darn good. Good. Okay, let's reset it now to zero. Back to my page. I'm going to press zero all, and it makes everything zero. Good. Now, if I wasn't super confident that this is going to work the first time without testing, I can take my mouse, go to dry run, click, and it's going to allow me to do a run with this, but without firing the plasma cutter. Let's press run. It's going to run through the G code. Maybe I should move that. Whoops. And it's going to go through and do the drawing, but not actually cut it out. That looks like it's probably doing the headphone area. Next cut is going to be the big outside cut, I think. Be a bunch of little teeth and then the big head. Maybe not. As that's going, you can see what part it's cutting out on the screen. Yeah, I guess it was the outside. Finished. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go deselect dry run, and now it's actually going to do the cutting. Double check, it's at zero. Yep, looks good. Turn on my ventilation. Make sure that my lungs are going to stay clean, and so will my eyeballs. And now I can go click run. The machine will start its thing. Now, as a responsible person, I'm gonna clean up my mass and turn things off and all that stuff. I don't need those for now. So that turned out pretty awesome. That didn't take me too long since I was working from an existing image already, but my next step would probably be you know, cleaning up the back, anything that needs to get grinded off, a little bit of slag. Some of that can be tweaked in the settings. Somebody left this a mess. Anyways, uh, I would go ahead and do that stuff next. So there we have it. That was a basic kind of a one way to create your files for a plasma cutter. So that turned out pretty cool. It almost fits me too. But anyways, that uh, that's a whole nother day is doing the cleanup polishing, painting, maybe adding a hook so you can hang it on a wall, whatever. But uh, thank you so much if you were able to make it through all that. I hope some of it was helpful. You can take a couple things, regardless of which version of Inkscape you are using, 
the idea is the same. It's all about that big idea and creating something that works for you. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, leave comments. If there's questions, I'll do my best to answer them. You're all awesome. Bye.